Alright, this video, I'm going to speak about competing in the martial arts. Now, people that wa normally watch my videos, they should know my views on competitions. I pretty much, um, I promote liberating, your, liberating yourself from competition in which to not compete, but to artistically express yourself and to become a true artist. I see that martial arts should be more like expressing yourself in a peaceful way, in an artistic way, kind of like a Beethoven or a Picasso, you know, it's an art, you express it peacefully, you create, you express, there is no need to compete, you simply just p perform and um, express yourself, and then beauty is um, the result, that's art to me, but I understand that a lot of people that want to join martial arts want to they have a competitive mind and they want to um, they like to compete and they they want to compete and my thing is to at least compete if you're going to compete to at least compete in a healthy in a safe way as safe as you can as healthy as you can and to just be very respectful and you know, take you know, watch out for your own health and the other person's health as well. So I'm gonna go through each martial art and explain, you know, my views on whether you know how safe it is, and basically to distinguish between the different ways of competing in the martial arts and these different styles. All right, the first one is boxing. We all know about boxing. All right, everybody knows what boxing is. Boxing is dangerous, but there is, you know, safety measures. They use bigger gloves, you know, to help um, the fighters stay safer. And you can't hit the person in the ground. You know, there's, you know, once a person goes to the ground, they get ten seconds to get up, and it's more controlled, all right? There's no elbows, there's no knees, there's no kicks, there's just punches, that's it. It's, it's not safe in the sense that it's full contact, but it's a lot safer than some of the other arts that I'm gonna speak about, or some of the other sports I'm gonna speak about. But boxing, we all know about boxing, all right? It's definitely more safer than MMA. It's definitely more safer than Thai boxing, all right? Next, number two, is kickboxing. Kickboxing is pretty much the same thing as boxing, but then there's some kicks involved. Alright, there's still no elbows and knees, so, and you can't hit a grounded opponent. Alright, so, it is pretty much as safe as boxing, but it, it is a full contact with gear, the gloves are pretty big, so that will keep the, the fighters safe. Now, number three, Thai boxing. Thai boxing is extremely brutal. It's one of the most violent, you know, combat sports out there. It's it, there's knees and there's elbows, um, but they still use, you know, ounce gloves that are pretty big. But knees and elbows are very destructive. There's no hitting a grounded opponent, but it's very brutal, um, very unsafe. Now there's number four, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's no striking, all right? Um, the competition of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is just joint locks, but it's full contact in the sense of where they go at full speed, full force, takedowns, and basically rolling around and getting submission holds, it's generally pretty safe because there's no striking. So it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is pretty safe to compete. Now there's martial art forms, competitions like Wushu and all these other martial arts. Obviously that's very safe because there's no striking involved or no knockouts and stuff like that. That's number six. Number seven is Judo. Judo, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there is no striking. Right, it's uh, pretty safe because there's no striking. All right, number nine, 
or number eight is karate. Karate, in that competition, there's no punches to the face, but there's kicks and knees to the face, and there's no, there's, there's bare knuckles, there's no gloves used, um, there's just a growing protection, and pretty much you could go all out on the body. It's, it's, it's pretty intense. There's no, there's no striking at the ground, in the ground. But it's pretty intense, pretty realistic. The only thing is that there's no punches to the face. My thing is, the, f the farthest I would take it in sparring would be pretty much, f you know, pretty much, um, Close to full contact to the body with no gear, not even grown protection, and then light contact with open hands to the face. So the way that I spar would be close to the way that the karate people, practitioners would compete. But it's just that I do light contact to the face with open hands. But you know, when you get to a high level of training, I would spar with the almost full contact to the body depending on how much damage the, the sparring opponent could take so I would say that karate is very realistic in the sense of where there's no gear used, no gloves, none of that um, the only thing is there's no punches to the face but really I'd say that if they just used uh, more control to the face that would be better alright the next one is Taekwondo, which is like point sparring, which is mainly kicks. So Taekwondo is mainly kicks, and it's it's pretty safe because it's point sparring. So after you get like a clean hit, the referee will step in and award you a point, and that's pretty safe. All right. The next one is San Sao. It's this Chinese kickboxing, and this is like basically like American kickboxing. But there's takedowns, and but then once a person gets taken to the ground, it resets. So there's no elbows, no knees. There's no striking to the ground. You know, a grounded opponent, and it's 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 almost like Thai boxing, but a little bit safer because there's no elbows and knees. But the good thing is that there is takedowns. But it just resets once somebody gets taken down. Alright, the next one is wrestling. Wrestling is X. It's very safe in a sense of there's no striking. It's very you know, similar to judo, very similar to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Wrestling is, is pretty safe, but the only problem with the wrestling is the, the transmission of like viruses and diseases in a sense of getting ringworm, getting cauliflower ear, just getting some weird rashes on your body due to the wrestling and you know constant skin to skin contact with 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 um sweat and all that. So that's the negatives of wrestling. Number the next one is fencing, which is very you know safe because there's there's um equipment used, there's helmets, there's gear. So it's safe. The fencing. Alright. It usually stops after one hit, all right, and then you have equipment, so it makes it safe. The next one is gymnastics, you know, pommel horse. I didn't know this before, but I just found out that the pommel horse is actually turned into a sport from a martial art. They were actually, you know, used to use that type of technique for people that would ride horses, and they would have to switch to different sides, you know, of the horse in order to... Um, rescue somebody or or something of that manner or grab somebody to get them up into the horse so the um, gymnastic pommel horse is actually a martial art that had turned into a sport and obviously that is very safe to compete in next one is the shot put in the, in the Olympics it's also another type of martial art that turned into a sport and that is very safe to compete in the next one is the javelin throw. It's also a very safe sport to compete in that used to be a martial art. Next one is archery. Or archery. That is another safe sport to compete in that used to be a martial art. Um, 
And then the next one is point shooting. This is a safe sport to compete in. You just have to watch out for lead, po you know, lead poisoning and stuff like that. But, you know, that is something where there's no contact and stuff like that as long as you're safe and you don't shoot yourself and, you know, whatever. All right. All right. Now, uh, talk about MMA. You know, we all know what that is. And I'd say I bring this up as close to one of the last because I just want to point out the stupidity of it. I say that it's the stupidest sport ever invented. I do not say that it's martial arts. It is not martial arts. And basically, you see all these different arts that I mentioned. None of them allow hitting a grounded opponent. And that's for a reason. That's the, the, the reason of why it is a sport and why you watch out for the, you know, the safety of the, of the sport practitioners and the respect involved. The golden rule that I talked about before, that you don't hit a grounded opponent. And that's that. But in MMA, they hit a grounded opponent. And they don't do it for survival, but they do it for fame. They do it for money. They do it for enter entertainment. That's why this MMA thing is the most ridiculous and stupidest sport ever created. And, it, you know, as an example, you could see all these other martial arts that, that have turned their skill sets into sports. And you see how they are watching out for the safety and how none of them allow hitting a grounded opponent, all right? It's like saying, let's fence, but then with real blades, with no protection. It's just complete idiotic to do something like that. And MMA is nothing new, you know? It's just being stupid with the regulations and not watching out for people's safety, you know? But, you know, obviously this is the most dangerous sport that you can participate in, and I do not recommend it for anybody. It's just stupid. All right, the next one is real street fighting with no weapons. All right, that's the next step. And obviously to compete, you know, to, to put yourself in that situation purposely is stupid. All right, next one is real street fighting with no weapons but multiple opponents. Once again, very unsafe and it's stupid. Next one is real fighting with weapons. Guns, knives, we all know that's, that's just pure violence and that is complete stupidity to do something like that. The next one is real fighting with weapons and multiple opponents. Same thing, stupidity, um, heading towards, this is just pure violence, death, whatever. This is what the MMA is leading you towards, all right? All right, the next one, and I'm talking about some, you know, some artistic, um, the artistic part of the martial arts. Okay, these are no competition martial arts that are purely artistic such as capoeira, okay, gymnastics, breakdancing, wushu, pro wrestling, martial art films. These are designed for entertainment purposes. These are very safe way to express the martial art. Next one is no competition, purely survival. These are arts such as Krav Maga, pressure point control tactics, and military martial arts. These are just for survival purposes. There's no real philosophy behind it, no way of life. All right, the, the last one that I'm going to bring up is the real martial arts that encompasses body, mind, spirit. This will give you a way of life. This will give you survival combat techniques. And this will give you an artistic expression of your spirit. These martial arts are not designed for competition. They're not sports. Some examples would be Aikido, Wing Chun Kung Fu, Tao Chi Kune Do, Tai Chi Kwan, Tao Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, My Art, Choi Li Fut Kung Fu, Traditional Kung Fu Styles. Now, as far as Choi Li Fut Kung Fu, I don't know the philosophy behind it. I don't know how much of a philosophy there is behind it. But you look into the other traditional Kung Fu styles like Shaolin, it will go towards the teachings of Buddha. A lot of these arts are, you know, at the foundation of the art is either Tao or Buddha. Or, and these go under the underlying teaching of love, compassion, and peace. So these are the types of martial arts that will give you a way of life, not just survival tactics, but all a way of life, survival tactics, and... Um, an expression of the spirit.
to artistic creativity.